Thank you, Brother Will, for that orientation. So, I think today we're all ready to listen and open our hearts to the messages of the Lord. Actually, we're all blessed to have you all here. Many have been called, but only few will be chosen. So, you are the few that have been chosen to, to be a part of this 27th Christian Life Program. Tama po, this is batch 27 now of uh, Sickness for Christ Christian Life Program. I allow me, Brother Will, to add something to sa mga information about this orientation of this uh, Christian Life Program. As I've said, Christian Life Program, this will be your point of entry. This is your entry point to be a part and become a member of Singles for Christ. After the three sessions, after the 12 talks, you have to decide. We will not force you. We will not force you to, to be part and be a member of this ministry, the Singles for Christ. Actually, our community is Couples for Christ. And there are a lot of ministries which are involved in this Couples for Christ. So this is one of which, one of that is Singles for Christ ministry. So kami po, ako po, hindi po ako single, wala akong single. Ako po ay may asawa na. As what we have said, uh, I am now, we are now the chapter coordinator, the couple coordinator of SFC chapter 1. So, under po kami ng Couples for Christ and we are blessed to have our service under this ministry, the Singles for Christ. So, nabanggit po kanina, 12 sessions. Don't think of that 12 sessions. Don't think na, ay, labing dalawang gerish pala itong mga tinan ko, nakakapakot naman, nakakainip. So, don't think that way, my dear brothers and sisters. Think one module at a time. Think one session at a time. And allow yourself, open yourself to the message of the Lord. Huwag niyong isipin yung labing dalawang linggo. Think of each Friday na darating, attend kayo as what Mike have said, yung chapter leader po ng chapter 1 ng SFC, all had been prepared for you. So all, what, all what, we are, what we are asking for you, my dear brothers and sisters, is your presence. The room, the food, the chair, ang ventilation, pini-prepare namin lahat yan for you. We will just give you comfort. We just ask you to open your hearts and your minds to the messages of the Lord as we go on each session. Amen po ba doon, my dear brothers and sisters? Amen. Amen. So now, uh, we will proceed now to talk number one of this Christian Life Program. Today, we will talk about love. So what a coincidence, ano po? Still, this is a fag-ibig ma'am. Fag-ibig ma'am. So, ganun sabihin nila sa, ano, sa Facebook, ano, fag-ibig ma'am. So, we just celebrated the Valentine's Day last, February 14. So, ramdam na ramdam pa rin natin pagmamahal, ano? So, today, we will talk about an extraordinary kind of love. Sino na po ba dito ang uh, may boyfriend, may girlfriend? Taas nga po ang kamay. Ayun, very honest si sister. Ayun, may boyfriend, may girlfriend. So, they are in love right now. They are into a relationship. In love. They're feeling the spark of love. So, we also have the family love. Yung, yung pagpamahal na nararamdaman natin na binibigay sa atin ng ating pamilya ng ating mga kapatid. We have also this friendly love. We have our best friend, our best buddy, wherein we share our, our, our innermost secrets, our thoughts, our desires. So those are love na nararamdaman natin sa araw-araw nating pamumuhay. But talking about this extraordinary kind of love, we will talk about in this talk number one, God's love. I am assuming that all of us, one way or the other, had experienced the love of God. But sometimes, hindi po kasi yung isip natin na yung mga biyaya pala na narinisip natin ay out of love ng ating Panginoon sa atin. So we will take it to the deeper level as we go on with this talk. Okay? So we will talk about the extraordinary kind of love and that is God's love. We all know that God is love. Pero pa bang hindi nakakalam na dito na God is love? So God is love, my dear brothers and sisters. In the beginning, God broke the deafening silence and stillness of the universe. I am talking about the creation now. Simula, it's total darkness. So ano, ang ginawa ng Panginoon, He lit up its blinding darkness, He filled out its infinite void, He disturbed the sound of silence, 
He did all this to manifest and share His love. So yung Panginoon natin, nung unang panahon, ano, during the olden times, nalulungkot siya, He wanted to share the love that He has. So, what did He did? For love is not love if it is not shared. Remember that, my dear brothers and sisters, for love is not love if it's not shared. Ay, pagpasensyahan nyo na po ako na, na parang na-overpower na ako no ano eh, na parang i-deliver yung talk, nakalimutan ko na po introduce yung may bahay ko po, si Rachel nga po pala, pasensya na po. We've been married for 11 years now and we've been part of the community for almost 5 years. Sorry po ah, na napangpapagat ako na yung nakalimutan ko na introduce yung asawa. Ay, almost 6 years na po kaming member ng Popos for Christ. So going back to the talk, sensya na lang. So I was just, I was saying, love is not love if it's if it is not shared. So what does God do? The first nature of God's love is God's love creates. The starting point for understanding God's love is found in the story of creation in Genesis. So how many among you have read the book of Genesis? Yun, very good. So actually, book of Genesis, this is the first book of the Old Testament where we can see, we can know the story of creation. Since God is love, He is compelled by His very nature to create so that He can share this love. And you can see this story in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 31. So, hihimahin ngayon natin mga kapatid kung paano ba tayo kinilate ng Panginoon that out of that love that we that He has for all of us, He created the world, He created man and woman. So, iisahin po natin yan. So, sabi niya, let her be light, nagkaroon ng liwanag. Then, for five days, God created heaven and earth, the water, the land, the animals, and the plants. And after each description of what God has created, the verse is followed by the words, God so how good it was. So, lagi niyang na-appreciate yung creation niya. So, kaya kung pakinahihit ng Panginoon ang tao? It, it was on the fifth day, fourth day? Sixth day, very good, my dear brothers and sisters. It was on the sixth day that God created man and woman. Then, after God created man and woman on the sixth day, God looked at everything that He made and found it not good right now, but very good. Kasi nakita niya meron nang magmaman doon sa creation niya after creating the, the heaven and earth, the plants, the animals. Nung kinilate niya, the sixth day yung tao, hindi na lang good yung creation niya. The crea His creation becomes very good. And after God had created the heaven and the earth, the land and the water, the animals and the plants, He found them good. But, after God had created man and woman, He found all creation not just good, but very good. So, God created man in His own image and likeness. We all know that. Tayo po ay create ng ating Panginoon in His own image and likeness. In the divine, the divine image of God. So, this is a better demonstration of God's love for all of us because He created us in His own image and likeness. We are created in the image of our Creator. So how privileged are we to be created in the image of God? So we are loved by God. Are we still in doubt that we are loved by God? So let's relate, let's relate this in the modern world, this first nature of God's love which creates. Ngayon ba nagkakrate pa ang ating Panginoon? Not literally, hindi na siya nagkikreate ng tao, hindi na nagkikreate yung mundo, nandito na yan. But in the present time, God's love still creates. Why all of you are here right now? He create an opportunity for you to be part of this 27 Christian Life Program. He uses people to invite you for you to be here and be part of this Christian Life Program. God's love creates. Bakit tayo nandito lahat ngayon sa doon, mga tatay? Because God created an opportunity for us to have work, to have a better living, to provide and to sustain our needs and the, family, and the needs of our family. 
God's love creates, hindi siya naghinto sa pag-create ng magagandang bagay na mangyayari sa ating buhay. Relating it to the present times. Amen po ba doon? Amen. Amen. So God loves creates. Nung napunta ka dito, nagkaroon ka ng kaaway, na, nagkapati kayo, God created an opportunity para magkasundo ulit kayo. God created an opportunity for you to be able to work in a Q company if you are working now in a Q company. That's how God loved all us. He never stopped creating blessings and opportunities for all of us. But, balik tayo dun sa Old Testament, ano sa Genesis. But man in the exercise of his God-given gift of free will rejected his Creator by sinning. And since then, man has continued to offend God and go against His ways. But God loves never wins, never despite the sinfulness of man. So, balikan po natin yung, yung, ano, yung unang nilikha ng, ng Panginoon, yung pang-anin ng nilikha ng Panginoon, which is yung man and woman niya. So, si Adam at si Eve, sila ang ating kauna-unahang magulang, kung saan nagkaroon sila ng kasalanan. What is their first sin? They have eaten the forbidden fruits. Pinagbawalan silang kainin yung prutas doon sa tree of knowledge. Pero si, si, si Eva, na-tempt siya, tinempt siya ng ahas, kinain niya. So ang nangyari, nabuksan yung kamalaya nila. But despite of that sin of Eden and Eve, God has this gesture of grace to give them clothing. Pagkasala na si Adat si Eva, pinihisan pa rin sila ng ating Panginoon. How many of you are familiar with the story of Cain and Abel? It, was also, it can be found also in the Genesis. So si Cain at Abel ang unang anak ni Adam and Eve. Si Cain ang panganay na anak, si Abel ang bunso. Si Abel, nag-aalaga, nagpapastol ng mga hayo. Si Cain, siya yung nag farmer siya. Siya nagtatanim ng mga halaman. So every time nagbibigay sila ng offering kay God, si Cain, si, si Cain kung ano lang yung maibigay niya ng mga harvest niya. But then Abel, he is choosing the best the best uh, animals he has. Pinipili niya yung pinakabata, pinakamataba, and ino-offer niya yung kay Lord. So that's how, na, da, doon nagkagalit yung pagsiselos ni Cain. Mas mahal at pinalulugda ng Panginoon si Abel because of that gesture of him. Now, ano ginawa ni Cain? Cain murdered his brother, Abel. God manifests his love and mercy by putting Mark and Cain to protect him for being killed on sight. So despite doon sa ginawa na to ni Cain, andun pa rin yung gesture of love ng ating Panginoon. Ano? Nilagyan niya ng marka si Cain para hindi siya patayin ng mga tao. So if you want to know more about this story, just take down this, Genesis chapter 4 verse 15. Pakibasa po mga kapatid. Ano? Then, tuloy-tuloy pa rin nagkakasala ang mga tao. Patuloy pa rin na nagkakasala. How many of you are familiar with Noah's Ark? We're still talking about the story of creation in Genesis. Noah's Ark. Di ba po, nung nagalit ang ating Panginoon dahil sa tindi ng kasamaan ng tao, tinawag niya si Noah. He advised Noah to make an ark at lilipulin niya na nga ang mundo sa pamamagitan ng baha. For 40 days, there will be rain. So it happens. Pero despite of this, nandun pa rin yung concern ng Panginoon. Gusto niya pa rin i-retain yung creation niya because he found that creation very good, the man and woman. But because of sin, because of pride, lust, pleasures, naging makasalanan ng mga tao. Now, even when mankind continued to just obey and offend God, still God promised Abraham, Isaac, Moses, and David that He would love their descendants forever. So, nandun pa rin yung promise ng ating Panginoon despite of the stubbornness and sinfulness of man. Pinangako niya pa rin, mamahalin niya tayo. Now, as in, in the Old Testament times, God's love for us today remains the same. That compassionate and forgiving love of God who created us. Now, maybe there will be a question in our mind right now. 
What if I abandon God? What if I sin against God? What will be the posture of our God? Even if we abandon Him, even if we abandon Him, He patiently waits for us to come back to Him. So that's how God loves us. Kahit gaano pa yung kasalanan na meron tayo, pag tayo nagbalik sa Kanya, He will never forsake or leave us. He will always be there for us. Now, the second nature of God's love. God's love forgives. As a human, hirap na hirap tayong ibigay ang forgiveness. Tama po ba yun? That is our weaknesses as human beings. Napakahirap po nating patawarin yung mga taong nagkasala sa atin. Pag niloko tayo ng boyfriend, pag niloko tayo ng girlfriend natin, hirap na hirap tayong patawarin sila. Pag sinaktan tayo ng kapatid natin, niloko tayo, hirap tayong magpatawarin. Pag sinigawan tayo ng office nating indyano, galit na galit tayo. Hindi natin sila mapapatawarin. But talking about this different level of forgiveness, the God, God's love that forgives, we will take again into a deeper level yung pagkakaintindi ng ating Panginoon dito sa pagpapatawad. We will not consider the human side of forgiveness kasi very wicked ang human. Mahirap ibigay ng human ang pagpapatawad. But then, this is the second nature of God's love. God's love forgives. And this forgiving love is described again in the Bible. Balik po ulit tayo sa Bible. Ano po? In this most well-known parable that has come to be known by wrong title. How many of you are familiar with the prodigal son? Prodigal son. Wala pa po. Yun, yun. So, the story of the prodigal son. Sabi po, parang mali daw po yung title nun eh, no? But this parable is really about a father who has two sons. The central figure in the parable is neither the younger son or the older son, but the central figure it is the father. And the central message is the father's undying and infinite love, his loveless and generous love, not just for the younger son, but for the elder son. And it can be found in Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 31. So, when you're at least, so nasa kwarto nyo kayo, my dear brothers and sisters, find time to read this verse yung hindi pa alam yung istorya. So, himayin din po natin yung istorya na ito sa New Testament. This is now part of the New Testament. These are the accounts of the lives of Jesus Christ. We have four Gospels in the New Testament. Luke, Matthew, Mark, and John. Those are the four Gospels wherein Jesus Christ nakisalimuha siya sa mga tao. The accounts and lives of Jesus Christ can be found in the Gospel of these four apostles. So now, talking about the story of prodigal son, ang istorya po kasi nito eh, yung bunso anak niya, so we have three main characters in this uh, particular scene in the Bible, in this parable of the prodigal son. The father, the younger son, and the older son. Now, the younger son have decided to ask for his inheritance. Alam niyo po, under Jewish law, the children inherit their share of property only after the father's death. By asking for his share of the inheritance, the younger son is effectively saying that as far as he is concerned, his father is already dead. It is expected that he will never come back again. So, ganun po katindi yung ginawa ng younger son dun sa father. Tinreed niya na as patay yung tatay niya by asking for his inheritance. So, ano po ginawa ng tatay? Out of his love for his son, he allowed the thing to happen. He allowed his son to go to other places. So, binigay na nga po dun sa younger son yung mana. Ano ginawa ng younger son? Happy go lucky yung buhay niya. Well, that's dito. Well, that's dun. Spend here, spend there. Bili ng iPhone 6. Hindi, joke lang po. Wala pang iPhone 6. <laughs> so, lahat ng luho sa buhay, ginawa po niya. In-embrace niya ang makamundong pagnanasa. 
at kalikayahan. So what had it happened? Naubos. Naubos po yung mana niya. Naubos. So anong ginawa nitong younger son? Naghanap siya ng pagkakabuhayan kasi hindi siya magubuhay eh. Nagugutom na siya eh. So anong ginawa niya? Pumasok siya na trabahador sa isang babuyan. Ano ang ginawa niya? Pinapakain yung mga baboy. May oras po ng kain ng mga alipin during the olden times. Uh, gutom na gutom na siya. Dahil sa gutom niya, ginawa niya, kinain niya na po yung pagkain ng baboy. So awang-awa siya sa sarili niya. Sabi niya, hindi ko ito ginagawa sa amin. Mahal ako ng mga tao sa amin. And this is happening to me right now. At ano po yung naging desisyon niya? Kahit nahihiya siya, naging desisyon niya, balikan ang kanilang ama at humingi ng tawad. So, but the younger son suffers misfortune in the distant land. He decides to come back and he prepares three statement. Ito po yung three statement niya. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Second, I no longer deserve to be called your son. Third, treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So, pinag-isipan niya po ito ng matagal hanggang nasa pag-desisyon na ito, babalik na ako sa ating ama. Now, this parable includes a praise that gives an insight into the nature and magnitude of the Father's love. If we're going to relate it now to the love of the Father to us, most of the time we turn our backs to the calling of God. Most of the time we neglect the kind of love that God is offering to all of us. Sometimes we have this instinct just to embrace the worldly pleasures. Sometimes we have this spot like this younger son. We have the tendency to turn our back to our Heavenly Father. Pero ano yung ginagawa ng Heavenly Father? Ano yung ginagawa ng ating Panginoon? Let's go back to the story. Now, ito na, pabalik na anak, ano? While he was a long way off, his father caught sight of him habang malayo pa lang yung anak niya. Natanaw na siya ng ama. Perhaps it was by chance that the father was outside the house when the son was about to enter his property. But it was more likely that his father had been constantly looking beyond his property since his son had left. So siguro po, yung ama, dahil sa pagmamahal niya sa kanyang anak, sa so umaga pa lang, lalabas na siya. Titingin sa kawalan, hinihintay niya yung pagpapalik ng younger son niya. During lunchtime, hindi dumating ng umagi anak niya. Lunchtime, titingin na naman siya sa kawalan, expecting that his son will come back. Pero wala pa rin dumanating. Gumabi na, wala pa rin dumanating. Every day, that will, that will be the routine of the father to expect the return of his son. Then this day come, wherein this younger son decided to go back to his father. At tuwang-tuwa, malayo pa lang natanaw na ng ama yung kanyang younger son. And what is the posture of the father? He runs after his son. He is very much willing to embrace him to give that hug na matagal niya nang hindi nagawa dun sa younger son niya despite, again ulitin ko, despite of treating the father dead because of uh, the, the, by asking the inheritance yun po kasi yung sa Jewish law pag inas mo na yung inheritance mo, buhay pa yung ama mo ibig sabihin, kinukonsider ka ng patay despite of that, the father is very much open to welcome him sa kanyang pagbabalik that's how, relating that love to the love of God for all of us, that's how God loves all of us, my dear brothers and sisters. He is always there for us. If now you have turned your back on Him, He is longing to see you come back. He is longing to see you, to serve Him, to glorify Him. Just have a sincere heart to approach Him and He will forgive you because God's love forgives. He is just waiting for you, my dear brothers and sisters, to come back. So this story actually was given by Jesus Christ. So, ganito din describe ni Jesus Christ through this story of the prodigal son. Kung gaano tayo pamahal, 
ng ating Panginoon that no matter uh, kahit anong bagay ang gawin natin, kahit anong kasamaan ang nagawa natin, He is there to welcome us. But we should have that sincerity like what the younger son did. The sincerity to ask for forgiveness. And you will be forgiven, my dear brothers and sisters. So let's go back to the story of the prodigal son. This father loved his son so much that he has been waiting. He has been regularly watching the path leading to his house. This is what I'm saying just a while ago. He does, ito pa, he does not wait for him to come near. Diba sabi ko? Hindi niya nahihintay na makalapit. Siya na ang tumakbo at tiyakap niya ang kanyang anak. Lahat ng ama, they would just wait and expect an apology. Diba po, napakaano naman nun ang gesture ng ama dito sa prodigal son. He does not expect his son to ask for an apology. Not this father. He loves his son so prodigally that he hugs and kisses him. No matter how dirty he must have been. Bitin ko, no matter how dirty he must have been. Relating that to our lives right now. Makasalanan po tayo. Let's admit that all of us are sinners. Because we are living in a world where in sins are catered and a buffet style. Sin all you can. Buffet ang kasalanan sa mundo. So we should be careful and our crave for sin. We should be careful in that, my dear brothers and sisters. Kahit gano'n tayo ngayon makasalanan, ha, yayakapin tayo ng ating Panginoon. He is waiting for you to come back. He is waiting for you to embrace Him. And He will embrace you more tightly, my dear brothers and sisters. Balik ulit tayo sa story ng parat na ano, na story of the prodigal son. So the son stuffers out his repeats, prepared statements. Nag-prepare siya. Actually, sinabi niya na po, sinabi niya, uh, ano po yung statement ng prodigal son? Ang sabi niya, Father, I have seen against heaven and against you. Second, I no longer deserve to be called your son. Now, the third statement, which is, treat me as you would treat one of your hard workers, hindi na po yun pinasabi ng father dito sa kwento ng prodigal son. He doesn't allow his son to say that third statement, but rather he just embraced him. His posture is, he asked his servant to give his younger son robe, sandals. Pihisan siya, bigyan ng magandang robe, bigyan ng sandals, bigyan ng sing-sing. So that is the posture of the father. Despite of what the younger son had did, what what uh, what magnitude of love this father had shown in this story of the prodigal son. Now, talking about the elder son, parang nakalimutan na natin yung elder son, ano? So yung elder son, which stayed with his father, which became faithful in doing his active with this his task, dun sa lugar nila, asa ama niya, nagtatampo siya. Sabi niya, bakit po tinatrato pa rin anak yan? E tinalikuran na nga tayo niyan eh. Winaldas nga niyan yung pinamana mo sa kanya. Now you are accepting him again. Nagtatampo yung elder son. So, the elder son refused to call his younger brother as brother but refers to him as this son of yours. So the father also assures the elder son of his love. So ano yung sinabi ng father dito sa story of prodigal son? My son, everything I have is yours. What an assurance from our God. Everything I have is yours. So right now, my dear brothers and sisters, if we will relate that to our present time, if you are not that younger son, but you are the elder son, you are going to Mass every Sunday or every Friday or Saturday, whatever free time you have. We have actually three days, ano, my dear brothers and sisters, para mag-attend ng, ng Mass. Yung, yung sinasabi nga uh, Mass of Obligation na every Friday magmamas tayo, ano? So, tatlo yun, tatlo yung opportunity natin, my dear brothers and sisters, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, we're given a lot of time para makita si Jesus Christ in the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Now,
So ganun yung ano, ganun yung assurance na binigay doon sa elder son. Naka lahat ng pag-aari ko ay sa iyo. So that is the assurance now that God is giving to all of us. Everything he owns it is for all of us. Finally, it is a parable that confirms God's willingness to give us all that He possesses. Lahat ng meron siya ay para sa atin. Everything I have is yours. Even His only begotten Son. So I invite you, my dear brothers and sisters, to please watch this video. Lights off, please. They are fixing the... Alam niyo po, pagpakasya na yung show, nakakaroon talaga ng technical difficulties, ano? So, as I said, this is a work of God. This is a work of Him. So, sometimes, evil are very persistent to disrupt us. So, let's all watch this video.
puso natin na to yung verse na ito sa John 3.16. So at least may baon na tayo pag tinanong tayo ng mga born again Christian. Sasabihin ko lang sa kanila, I can summarize everything that is written in the Bible. John 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave us His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but will have an eternal life. Pwede po ba yun, my dear brothers and sisters? Let's put this into our heart, then later on, put it into action. Yun naman yung pinakamahalaga eh, no? Sabi nga nila, faith, which is not put into action, it is dead. Amen po ba? Basta sa puso na po ba natin to? John 3.16 So let's challenge ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters. Kasi ito na yung summary ng buong Bible. In this way, the love of God has revealed to us. God sent His Son into the world so that we might have life through Him. Nagsakawatawang-tao po yung buktong na anak ng ating Panginoon para mas lumalim pa po yung pagkakakilala natin sa Ama at yung relasyon natin sa Ama. Jesus Christ served as the bridge to the gap created by sin between God and man. Ulitin ko po ano? Jesus Christ served as the bridge to the gap created by sin between man and God. Ganun po tayo kamahal ng ating Panginoon. Ang ating Ama, He is reaching out for us to the extent of giving us His only begotten Son. Kilala niyo po si Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Narinig naman po natin ano, marami siyang mga famous quotes, marami siyang mga ginawang magaganda for mankind. So, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, in one of his book entitled, One Heart Full of Love, it is written, Let's believe in God's love and let's be faithful to Him. If you look at the cross, you will see His hand lowered to kiss you. You will see his arms stretched out to embrace you. You will see his heart open to welcome you. He loves us in spite of how poor and sinful we are. His love is true and we should believe in his love. My dear brothers and sisters, I invite you now to please close your eyes. Please bear with me. I just wanted to, for you to focus at the cross. Close your eyes, my dear brothers and sisters. Think of the cross. Think of Jesus Christ dying on that cross. Think of the posture of Jesus Christ. His head is bowed down. So that posture is very symbolic, my dear brothers and sisters, because even to the point of death, Jesus Christ wants to reach for you. He wants to kiss you. Our Heavenly Father, through His Son, Jesus Christ, is still longing to kiss you despite of the things that we have done against despite of our stubbornness despite of our sinful desires the posture of our Lord Jesus the posture of God through His Son Lord Jesus Christ is to reach for you and His arms can you see His arms extended on the cross so that posture is very symbolic as well because that means our Lord Jesus Christ is waiting for you. He always welcomes you into His life. And you have to open your heart and your mind for this invitation, my dear brothers and sisters. Nakahuba ng ating Panginoon. You can see Him at the cross. His heart is open. His heart is open to welcome you, my dear brothers and sisters. He loves us in spite of how poor and sinful we are. When we say how poor you are, you are poor in spirit. You are poor in giving to those less fortunate brothers of ours. You are poor in dealing or sharing the love that you have to your office mate, to your family. You are hardling hatred and grudges against your family members. Despite how poor we are in spirit and how sinful we are, God of love is there. Love of God is there. His love and true and we should believe in His love. You can open your eyes now, my dear brothers and sisters. Thank you. So, in conclusion, well, pa ka na, conclusion eh, patapos na.
Thank you for bearing with me. In conclusion, we are both the younger son and the elder son in the parable. Some of us have taken our share of inheritance and abandoned God. Paano ba yun? No? Some of us, paano natin i-relate? Yun yung sa present situation natin ngayon. Yung story of prodigal son. Di ba tayo, ang daming blessings na binibigay sa atin ng ating Panginoon. The moment you open your eyes each morning, that is a blessing from God. Mga kapatid, napakadami po natin kapatid ngayon na nasa hospital. Meron po siguro ngayon, they are in their dying seconds of their life. All of us are here. We have our clothes. We are healthy. We are well off. May trabaho tayo. Pero minsan, tinatalikuran pa rin natin yung tawa ng ating Panginoon despite of those blessings. So that's how we can relate to the younger son. Sometimes, we tend to abandon and neglect all the blessings that we are currently receiving from God. Some of us have stayed but have become self-righteous. Masyado na yung kumpiyante ng sarili, no? Yung parang yung elder son, masyado na yung naging kumpiyansa niya. Naging self-righteous na siya. We have the tendency also of relating that to our present times. Minsan sinasabi natin, nagsisimba naman ako every Friday or every Saturday or every Sunday. Hindi naman ako uh, lumalabag sa samang utos ng Diyos. Pero bakit tumadating pa rin yung mga problema sa buhay ko? We should not expect that problems will not come our way if we are closer to God, we should not think that way. But if we are closer to God, we can manage to handle all our problems. God's love us dearly. Like the younger son, we should come to our senses and return to God who is patiently waiting for us. Unlike the elder son, we should not be jealous of our brothers or sisters and be hesitant in accepting God's invitation to join in this celebration. Tayo po, nakikita naman natin yung mga sarili natin sa salamin, ano? When you look yourself in the mirror, what can you see? Ano nakikita nyo? We are seeing a reflection of God's love. Pag tinitingnan nyo yung sarili nyo sa salamin, that is a reflection of God's love. God's love is reflected in His creation and we are God's creation. God's love is described in the parable of the father and his two sons, but the fullest revelation of God's love is the sending of His Son to suffer and die so that we may have eternal life. Thus, we ought to know who the Son really is. So next Friday, sabi nga po ni Will kanina doon sa orientation, talk number two, it's all about who is Jesus Christ. So next week, and we are expecting all of you will be back and more are still coming. Amen po ba doon? Let's declare that. Let's claim that. that by next week, kung meron pa po kayong mga kaopisina, meron po kayong kaflat, Meron po kayong kakilala na pwede pong mag-join sa atin in this Christian Life Program. Invite them. Be an instrument of God's blessing. Be an instrument of God's peace. So again, by next week, makikita-kita pa rin tayo. And before I end this talk, alam niyo po, I just wanted to share, there is an ongoing debate right now between Satan and Jesus Christ. So, so si, si Satan, alam niyo na po, persistent yan eh na naitigil yung evangelization, yung massive evangelization na ginagawa ngayon ng ating Panginoon. Sabi ni Jesus Christ na gano'n, uh, I have the Pope, I have the priest, I have Pope Francis, I have the cardinals, I have the bishops, I have the clergy, I have the, the nuns who will support my work of evangelization and they are all mine. Sabi ngayon ni Satanas, Sige, sa inyo na yan. Sa inyo na lahat yan. I have the politicians. I have the corrupt government officials. I have the murderers. I have those who are na nangre-rate. Sa akin lahat yan. Sabi ni Satanas, may tawa. Ha, 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 ha. Sabi ni Jesus Christ, For now, they are yours. But they will be mine as well. Now, naging specific si Jesus Christ. You see what is happening in Doha, Qatar right now? There is an ongoing 
Christian Life Program and all of the participants in that Christian Life Program are mine. Ha 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 ha, tumawa si Satanas! That's what you think! Next week, those who will not be present, those who will not finish this Christian Life Program, they are all mine! Ha 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 ha! Now, the decision is yours, my dear brothers and sisters. For God, may God be praised.